Right. Do this. <laughs> okay. Um, and we're live. We are live. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning this morning. Uh, it is Friday, apparently. Friday the 15th of March. And I am joined here by two incredible guests. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Scott Duncan, who is the manager director of Unots UK, uh, longtime supporter of the Burnt Chef project and headline sponsor for our upcoming fundraiser in Crikey. A week, two weeks. So, morning, Scott. You okay morning, this morning? Chris. Yes, very well. Thank you. Thanks for having me on this morning. That's no problem at all. It's uh, yeah, pleasure to have you. Uh, we are also joined by Akhtar Islam from now two Michelin star restaurant Ophim based in Birmingham. Akhtar, how are you this morning, my friend? Yeah, very good. Thank you very much. Very good. Very good. You guys well? Feeling, do you know what? Feeling jaded today. Feeling jaded. It was a uh, 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 busy day yesterday. So um, looking forward just to, uh, is there rugby on this weekend? I don't know. I wouldn't. <laughs> I've got no interest in rugby, but oh. I'm, I'm not talking rugby after Scotland getting beat from Italy. Let's move <laughs> on quickly, please. Oh, no, let's, uh, <laughs> let's just put a 30-minute timer on and just go with this one, shall we? Uh, okay, guys. So, um, usual format for this. So, for those who haven't joined us before, format is very simple. We've got 30 minutes to talk about a particular subject matter that is um, current in hospitality, current in the news. Um, and, you know, if we manage to cover that, we do that well, then we start talking about a few other things as well. But these are designed for you to listen to whilst you're having your coffee, to come away with a few different ideas, a few different opinions, uh, and a slight take on our uh, usual mental health rhetoric. Let's be thought leaders in this space. I can see we've already got quite a few people uh already joining us with 100 attendees so guys we've uh we're gonna give them all the good stuff so the first topic we have here today is recently in spain uh the minister yolanda diaz um how was having a big debate and said that the late night eating culture poses mental health risks for the hospitality workers um it said the long hours that are needed to sustain that was ultimately having an impact on the overall health and well-being uh, his quote was, a country that has its restaurants open at one o'clock in the morning is not reasonable. So first and foremost, what restaurant is open at one o'clock in the morning in Spain, right? What sort of food are you doing? Is that yeah, something? I, I think, you know, it's it's a cultural thing. Um, you know, it sort of fits around what's traditionally been there, working and, 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 and social social aspects of their life. So, I mean... It, it's going to be a, a big major shift in how people socialize, I guess. And I, there are, I mean, we've all been spent some time in Spain. There are restaurants, I mean, they're not very, I wouldn't say quality spaces, but there are places where you can uh, um, meet and socialize and get something to eat and get something to drink. I mean, that's, that's, that's normal. Um, it, but that's very much something that's come about because that's part of their cultural norm. It's just how they've always socialized, I guess. You know, you know it, with that three hour break in the middle of the day, their working day a little, finishes a little later. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it means people socialize a little later. I think the average time, Chris, is around about 10 o'clock. So, according to research. So, you know, that seems a bit more reasonable. And as Akhtar just said, the normal day shut, finishes about eight rather than five or six. So um, it kind of makes sense. Um, and then that long lunch in Spain, the main meal is lunch, and that's 12, uh, 2 to 4 or one thirty to 3.30. So, you know, when you shift that working day till 8 o'clock, it kind of makes sense that you want to eat at 10. So, mm. you know. Yeah, I see. I I, know, I is, guess. It, is it one of these, like, Like it, almost like a non-topic. Like ultimately, it's you know out there. If hospitality, you know, <clears throat> establishments want to stay open that late, and they can they can find the labour to do that because ultimately, if, if you know, if you can look what's happened um, in the UK, for example, <clears throat> here we we majority of us or restaurants in general, you know, were six or seven day ops. Now it's mm. quite often common to find restaurants that have four or five day ops. 
and that's been uh, uh, heavily, uh, I guess, influenced by by labour or, or lack of, and people choosing the industry itself, choosing to have a different work-life balance. So we've, we've made that choice. Um, if, if, and I think customers would want us to be open all day, every day, but it's something that we, we made a decision and decided to change ourselves. We didn't need government intervention to tell us, oh yeah, you guys can only open four days a week or five days a week, or you can't. It's, it's, it's something that the industry will do based on reactions to, to whatever's happening either in the economy, people's lifestyle choices and how they socialize, and, and various other triggers that, 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 that will then push uh, any industry to change. Uh, you know. So talk I don't know. Change. <clears throat> Talking of change, it's a subject matter that comes up a lot, and and you know anyone who's heard me talk about it will actually realise that it's it's not quite as clear cut. But you know we we've, we've gone from working perhaps 60, 70, 80 hour weeks, as you just said, and we have started to look at reducing the period of time that we're spending in hospitality venues from a worker's perspective. Now, what are your thoughts on, on well, for both of you? Because both of you work incredibly long hours. You know, I, I'm, I'm guessing, and I would, I think it's fair to say you're probably hazarding in way over 60 hours a week, both of you, because that's, that's the job of a, a leader, right? And is it sustainable? Is it something that you think can be done in a in a healthy way. Well, I'm 44. I'm still alive. I've been doing it for 30 years. <laughs> Mic drop moment. I don't know what to say. I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's a very personal journey down to your own uh, uh, capacity to deal with stress, your own capacity to deal with uh, uh, physical fatigue, your own capacity to deal with physical or mental fatigue. That's what it all boils down to. At the end of the day, it's a very personal thing. I've worked, there have been times I've worked two jobs in order to try and get, get by and f fulfill my obligations to, 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 to my family and so on and so forth. So, you know, I'm still here. Um, I'm still, my brain still works. I'm still as sharp as I always have been. Uh, and and you know, I can still, you know, see the, the week through and, 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 and you know, Get ready for the the, the, the week after. Like, it's it's a very personal thing. I think you know. It, it's it, I guess we're not not saying that if you don't if you don't have that capacity you you won't succeed or whatever. But ultimately, as with anything in life, you know, the more you apply yourself to it, um, <laughs> the better you will get, and and, and the, the more you'll achieve in that particular discipline or role or or, or field. But you know, ultimately, you've got to decide if that's healthy for you or not. And, and I think it's, it's always got to be a very personal journey. And what about you, Scott? Because every time I see you, you're, you're bouncing around um, not just the country, um, but also the different parts of the world with the head office being in Padova in Italy. How do you manage to remain uh, so sharp and so on the ball with doing uh, way more than what you would consider average hours? Yeah, I think I think like Actor says, you've got to you got to run with it. And I think for me, you know, as as a leader, you're spinning lots of different plates. You know, whether that's business strategy, planning, culture, people, you've got all of that, all of those elements going. But for me, and kind of similar to Actor, which is is good to hear, I guess. You know, the more you do, the more you're motivated, and the more you drive forward. And for me, that works. You know, the busier I am, the the, the better I am. I think the, the challenge we all face as leaders is trying to balance that with kids, family, friends, school, exercise, diet, all of that part. That's where it becomes difficult. But, you know, from from the the hours point of view, you know, in, in my world, which is di very different from actors, you know, you're doing your normal day-to-day -day business, which is meetings and demos and consultancy during the day. But then... <clears throat> as we try and build a brand and do things, you've got dinners at night and then you've got functions at night. So you're finishing at six, seven of your normal day and you're handstanding through the shower and you're back out again. So that's where it becomes difficult when, when those evenings become 2 a.m. and then you're back at it again. But for me, the more you do, the more you get the buzz and you keep going. So yeah. whether that's right or wrong is a different discussion. But for me, that's, that's what works. And I think that's the most important thing it, for you, 
for you, for me, maybe not for everyone, you know, it's, it, it, it's, you know, no one's forced to do what we do. No one's forced, like, you know, we live in a, in, in, in a society where there, there are more jobs than there are people willing to do it. So if, if you find a particular industry or a particular role too taxing, go and find another one because there's plenty of jobs out there, whatever field you look into. Um, mm. It's the reality of the situation. So if you, you know, you, you have that choice and that choice has always been there. It's not as though anyone's been designated a, a, a role in life. Like, you know, you, know, you, you have those careers, they that school, and they give you that... Uh, the, uh, that purple book, the national record of achievement. Well, I've never got one of those, but oh. not school, but everyone else did. I still feel left out. But nevertheless, <laughs> you know, they, they don't stamp in there. This is what you're going to do for the rest of your life, and if you don't do it, that's it. You know, we're going to put you into a grind, meat grind, and you know, you'll be fed to the pigs or whatever. People have always had a choice. Like there's all these service-led industries. There's you know, skilled industries that you can get into. I mean, the choice has always been there. And I think you know. We should we shouldn't forget that like no one's being forced to do you know we, we don't live in a society where you know in general where people are the average person is forced to do something that they don't want to do they've always got that choice not to mm-hmm. and you know we choose to do and work the, the hours that we work because we enjoy doing it and that's the reality of it I think that's that's a very important point though is that actually we do enjoy what we do right and like you know often enough I'm I'm the first one to say on on to what I'm doing talks is that you can do 60 hour weeks and it is okay to do that providing you are you enjoy what you do you feel like you've got some degree of autonomy you feel like that actually you know that you can scale back if you need to as well and that it is sustainable in certain ways like you know Christ uh, dread to think how many weeks I've done over 60, 70 hours, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm constantly unwell or it doesn't mean that my decision making's changed. You know, there are periods of time where your memory goes and stuff, in which case, actually, you go, hold on a second, I need to take some time out. But I guess um, that's been quite privileged from a, from a business owner and a leader's perspective. So what sort of advice would you give to someone who is doesn't have that level of autonomy or that level of freedom to be able to say do you know what guys i'm going to dial it back today or i'm going to you know add an additional resource they they are perhaps a kp or a maitre d or a housekeeper that may not have necessarily have that say or even scott one of your sales team so it's a really good point chris i think for me the most important thing is we've got to we've got to find in every person a passion that allows them to recharge their batteries you know, so when you get that time off, whether that is exercise, whether it's painting, whether it is whatever it is, you know, you've got to have that passion, that hobby, that something to switch off and recharge your batteries. For some people, that might be running one hour every night, you know, if they can. For some people, that might be, you know, doing something with the family, whatever it is, but you've got to find time to do something to recharge the batteries and it's got to be consistent you know for me you know echoing what you're saying is that it, it's what you choose to do in that time off as well like the problem is you know even now like you know people with extended like in our in our industry with extended time off you know in between weeks um if you choose to spend that time going out drinking and you know out partying and stuff and then you come back in on following feeling knackered because but, but it's very easy and i've had these conversations with young chefs but they've had three days off solid so they've used all the three days or two and a half days of that just drinking and going out partying and doing all manner of weird stuff and stupid stuff and then they're coming back in on the wednesday morning you know looking better than then by wednesday evening they're saying oh it's really tough or blah so what did you do in the three days off you had like in the, in the time that you had off what did you do did you recuperate? Oh, I was out spending time with friends. But what did you do when you spent time with your friends? Like, it's very easy to jet. I think what, one thing we need to look at is, is, is something that we've found culturally, I think it's becoming a thing. It's very easy to blame the job for everything. We don't actually consider what do we do in our own time off when we're not at that job. Because we're not down the coal mines anymore. You know, 
you know, for every waking hour. It's, it, it, the world isn't like that anymore. We need to get away from that. We need to ask ourselves, when we are working, what, what are we doing? Now, what are we putting in our bodies? What are we eating? Are we keeping hydrated? So on and so forth. And when we're not working, what are we actually doing with our time? Mm. And, 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 you know, are we actually giving ourselves time to recuperate? Are we, are the activities that we're getting up to in that time, is that actually conducive to rest? Or is that more stress, whether that be through intake of things that you shouldn't be or, or, or overconsumption to late nights and so on and so forth? Like, what are you actually doing? Yeah. Like I say, it's, it's, it's very simple and it's almost quite fashionable. Not so fashionable, it's become the thing where it's all about blaming, blaming job. People have worked for, 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 for as long as uh, humanity has been around. And, you know, I've been in the working, in, uh, in, in the working environment for 31, 31 years in, in a couple of weeks. And, you know, these conversations, I know they're becoming more and more prevalent, but the conversations that we are having with people, it, you know, we're working less hours than we ever, ever work. Working conditions are better. We've got technology and so many other things to help us with that. Yet we seem to be more and more tired. Mm. And we've got to ask ourselves, what external factors are affecting that? as opposed to the fact that we're just having to work. I, I, I personally believe we work our work, especially in our industry, with the, uh, you know, the way hours and so on and so forth are looked at and how people have that balance between time on, time off, and the tech that we have as well, which makes the job so much easier. Why are we now so much more tired and so much yeah. more uh, struggling so much more with the role? And it's not just hospitality. Any role that any 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 role that you, any industry that you talk to, people have the same echo the same thing. I think there's a lot economically. There's a lot going on in various. It's not just necessarily work related. There is an awful lot of um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in our subconscious that we get pranged by on a daily basis that does mean that we're tired and we're also still recovering from quite a traumatic global pandemic you know that that the damage that that's done to us in terms of our psychology has not yet really been quantified but scott did you have anything to add on that particular point yeah no i think i think actor's correct i think that the only thing i would say is our brain has continually continually been fried by screen time and mobile yes. phones and and that that time where you might have chilled out in the past or you know let your brain rest a bit you know if if we 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 all we've all got a phone stuck to our hand when we're not working and and i think that's the key thing whether it's your own social media or personal stuff or personal email or work email or what other projects you've got on the go you're always looking at that you know um i've got two phones one for work and one personal and i carry both of them and you know when you're not looking at the work one you're getting a a ping on the school app from your school teacher talking about your kids and you know you need you need a pa just to deal with that to be perfectly honest so you know there's there's just lots of distraction coming from that screen time when when you should be resting i think that's the key thing for me i, I think they agree, agree with you on that because i think <coughs> you know we we I think one thing that is good is we're starting to understand how more and more, in, 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 as, as in the, the knowledge is more widely available, um, often taken off your phones and your, <laughs> your tablets and stuff. <laughs> but I like, you know, the effects of, um, say, social media and, and how it keeps you engaged and how it's designed to keep you engaged. So, you know, you are, it's, it's quite common to see just people just glued and, they're, they're, and it's, and we're all guilty of it. And, yeah, really, in all fairness, what is that actually doing in, in, in the back there? It, it isn't like you're not having that time to just, like say, daydream or, or let your, your mind process stuff because you're always throwing new stuff at it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's and one of the things I think as well. I mean, that's stopping help. Uh, you know, one thing I've noticed over the years, you know, people's, um, even though we've got more and more access to more and more information, I think the ability to absorb information because we've got so much being thrown at us. I think the brain's struggling to to process it, and I think uh, you know. I think in time we'll realize how I'm going to use you know I'll say detrimental um, smart devices have been to humanity. And it's like 
I'll, 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 I'll almost compare it to when they put lead into fuel. It was a great idea at the start. It solved the problem, but then we realized what it actually did. It did yeah. dumb humanity down because of the effects of lead. Um, I think it, if you if you look at the concept of mobile phones, right? They're designed to, as you say, probe those dopamine levels, spike that that um, animal instinct to go, ah, reward, reward, reward. And I think that actually, what inadvertently, over realistic, quite a small period of time as well, because mobile phones came in. I mean, Christ, the first Motorola brick that came in was when I was 16, 17, and I'm 36 now. So in a, a such a period of time, we've not noticed that actually in our terms of behavior, especially the younger generation now, is much more like reward-based um, activities. You know, even my my kids, they're like, you know, they, their attention spans are so short because if they're not getting that dopamine hit, they're on to the next thing. Um, and they're never doing one thing at a time. They're watching the TV and then they've got like, you know, music on in the background as well. And you're just like, how, like, where is your attention at? What the, what the hell's going on, you know? I think, I know you said like mid nineties, but actually it's, it's a lot shorter because, you know, the, the original phone, the only thing you had to like keep you entertained was that, was that snake game. <laughs> <laughs> but let's be honest, That's right? It's, it's, I think it's, it's, it's not just the advent of smartphones, it's when smartphones really started to take advantage of the tech and bring it all together. Uh, to the point where it's it's able to you know constantly keep you engaged. So I'd probably say that's in the last 10, 10 years or so, yeah. 10, 10, 12 years. So it's actually a lot shorter time how it's uh, how it's taken root and then uh, basically changed humanity. Just shows how simple creatures we are. Really, we can be we can be manipulated in such a short period of time just by these little glowing devices and in terms of technology um and just general you know general life and how busy it is do you think that's having much of an impact on sleep with with world sleep day on march the 15th today world sleep day ironically <laughs> do you think that uh, these things are having an impact on sleep is your sleep affected at this moment in time or are you guys both sleeping like babies oh well, thankfully when i put my head down my pillow I'm, I, I am out and I can sleep through which is great but I, I think in general where people would like to shut off and go to bed and I think that the difference between what people don't do when you go to bed to when you actually fall asleep so if you're there scrolling away or catching up on your messages and so on so you're in bed you're not you're not asleep I think so mm -hmm. and obviously I'm no uh, expert on sleep but the point you actually nod off to when you actually get into a uh, deep sleep where you know your, your body is and your mind is recuperating i don't know what the period is in that but surely that I'm, I'm sure there's a process so it, it's it's understanding that so i think that's what it is it's like you know yeah you might get to bed in time but it's like when that when are you falling asleep yeah scott i mean you've already mentioned you've got two two not just one phone but two phones yeah. um I think I think the answer for me, Chris, you know, do, do leaders get enough sleep? I think the answer is probably no, or def or definitely no, you know, as a as a broad statement. Um, I think for me personally, there's some real bad habits, which is you know putting the laptop back on at eight nine o'clock at night when kids are in bed, you know, logging back in, doing doing that type of stuff, keeping your phone in your bedroom, you know, you're you grabbing it and you're scrolling away. And I think that screen time late at night is is absolutely affecting sleep. So I think, you know, you got to get rid of those bad habits. Um, I think for me personally, and I'm not doing enough of it now, but I think I feel I sleep a lot better when, when I exercise more. You know, I, I think we've got to find time to exercise. You know, I've, I've let that slip. Um, I'm not doing nearly enough. And obviously just the physical... Um, part of doing that exercise definitely helps me personally sleep a lot more. So I think that's a key thing for people. You got to find half an hour to do a walk or an hour to do a run or an hour, half an hour to do something. Um, and and I think that'll definitely help your sleep. But for me, the bad the bad habits back to the phone and and logging on at night because I do it quite often. You log on, you'll try and do things, you get in the zone, and then suddenly it's one o'clock, and then the next day's a waste of time your productivity's gone so i think that's the, the parts for me is working late and an exercise 
Yeah, that's a really important thing, like presenteeism. We don't talk about it enough, but actually when you are trying to burn it at both ends, you can find, like as I said, from my own experience, overall my attention span perhaps isn't as great. My memory, my poor team at the moment, having to remind me about things all the time because it's just slipped. But the interesting thing for me is actually like, you know, so I mean, I, and at Actar, you probably get quite a few e emails and requests for various bits and bobs as well. But, you know, it's got to the stage now where my inbox is just, I've just given up on it. I've tried to keep up with it for so long that it's just got to the stage now. And people are like, have you got my emails? Like, when did you send it a week ago? I just, probably it's there somewhere, but I just can't, I can't even bring myself to look at it anymore. It's just got, it's got that out of control. Have you ever found that actually, like, with certain elements of your work, I know Actar, like, especially at two Michelin star level now, right? There, have you found that there's elements, you can't just go, do you know what? We won't place that as well uh, as we did today or we're not going to you know sous vide that for as long today just because i can't be bothered like do you ever do you ever get that feeling i know you you've got restrictions you perhaps you can't do that anymore well first of all we don't sous vide so that's great uh, <laughs> I, like, I, like to do, I like to cook <laughs> uh, but no um, no no of course not i mean at the end of the day if something's like any practical in ingredients come in and it's not right then the challenge is to find an alternative, find a way of making that work in order to maintain your standards. But your standards are your standards, and that, that you know you, you can't let that slip, and you can't you can't make exceptions for it because you just don't feel like it that day. That's just not how it works, um, and and that's the reality of it. Um, you know, when you when you tell yourself you haven't got a choice, you always find a way. That's what I've found. Nice. Yeah, well, that... I, th I think I think Chris, you know, Actar and I were different worlds, but the the objective for both of us is to deliver great customer experience, you know. And 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 in my world, we've got to find that whether that's you know solution based or equipment, um, we we've got to deliver that. And Actar's got to put a great plate of food on on the on the table. So you know the customer has got to come first. So we've got to do whatever we can to get that experience the best we can, you know, whether that is responding to an email quickly or delivering a piece of equipment quickly or delivering an amazing dessert. You know, it depends, but it's it's all about customer experience. It's a service profession, right? Irrespective of where you are in the ecosystem, there is that service element. And, and even ourselves as an organization, we're, we're in service of the entire community. And so, yeah, there, there's, but I think, um, I guess the, the big learning that I've had over the last few years is that actually, if you can build the people and the processes around you, it means that it's not necessarily all upon your head so that you have to do it at one o'clock in the morning, you know, it's, and I know, I know if your name's above the door, it's, it's, it's tough. It's really tough, but um, I don't know. It, it's the empowerment. And again, I saw the, a talk with Stephen Bartlett in Birmingham last night, and one of the things that he said now is that he spends, whether it's true or not, he spends 30 hours a week looking at CVs um, because he's realized that actually it doesn't matter how much it costs him or how long it takes to find really competent A-star people means that it just makes – everything so much easier the businesses perform a hell of a lot better and it's just a completely different kettle of fish um and so that's probably one of the key takeaways i took last night is that like we're incredibly lucky to have a really great team um at the burn chef project but it doesn't mean that we should never stop looking for that next a star player so that actually you can step away for a, a week you can have some holiday you know you can without having to fear that people are going to be phoning you or trying to get hold of you at short notice um I'm just going to take the quick opportunity. We've got quite a lot of comments uh, in here, which is absolutely awesome. Um, if you've got any questions for Actar or Scott um, about anything, like ask them anything, um, hit us with it. We've got literally three or four minutes left, so it'll be a very quick fire. But a couple of comments that we've had. Um, so Michelle says, sadly, you do not know that you're not able to keep up with those hours until it's too late. She's gone from 80 to 90 hour weeks for 17 years and then got burnt out and can hardly manage to do 5,000 steps a day to chronic fibromyalgia. I think it's very risky to say it's down to the individual or healthy for you. Interesting. So again, like a, a, a unique experience. What are your thoughts on those? Well, I'm not saying it's, I've not once said it's healthy for you. All I'm saying as my own lived experience and experience of my friends and colleagues um, <clears throat> who I've, you know, people I've known in the industry and various other industries, 
And it's very much, it's individual. When you decide it's not for you anymore, the decision is yours to decide. For me, like I said, I've done it my whole life. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, it's, and I've got a lot of friends, uh, many friends, uh, who, who are in similar sort of situation and they're still loving life. So and I say it's a very individual journey. It's a very individual situation. It's for you and for, only for you to decide whether it works for you or not. And when you decide it doesn't work for you, and at whatever stage that is, you know, whether it's earlier on in the journey or a few years down the line, when you decide it's not for you, you make that decision and you action that. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, Chris, it's, it's, it's all about culture, isn't it? It's about, you know, having that, if you are struggling or something's not working for you, having that person you can go to or having that opportunity to speak up without worrying about, your job or your position or or whatever. So I think, you know, we try to create a culture that's very open door, you know, and if you need help, come and see us, which is why we're all here. So, you know, as leaders, we've, we've got to be able to to let people reach out. So, you know, I, I think that's part of the, the challenge as well. Yeah, and it's that ability, isn't it, to I, if you can't identify it within your own organization because you're doing so many things, is that providing that psychological safety where people go, look, do you know what, I'm struggling this week, I can't do 60 hours or 40 hours or 30 hours because of stuff that's going on at home or just general health concerns. Um, how can we come up with a solution together to to, you know, to get over that hump? Uh, and that's what it's, it's all about, it's that communication, that dialogue. Um, Mark Henry from... I believe, Mark, Australia, if I'm correct. Uh, mental and physical fatigue comes with the position, but how do we manage mental and physical fatigue? I just get on with it. <laughs> I always have done. You know, I've, at one time, I, was, uh, I think we had about like eight or nine restaurants at the same time. You know, even now, like, you know, we've got you know, several arms of the business and things, you know, we've got over 100 or nearly 100 employees. You know, you get on with it. There's so many aspects of it. Like, it, I, I once again, I just think there's no, there's no. Obviously, this you got to manage it yourself. You got to find the process that works for you. Like, mm -hmm. it, it is very much around yourself. You know, there's, there's there's always a way that works. You know, whether it be how you set up your desk, how you, the intervals that you work in. You know, if you you do a thirty five minute burst, give yourself ten minutes, and then go back into it. Like. You know, there's loads of different processes. If you give yourself that time just to get up from your desk, walk around, pop outside, I don't know, whatever. Or well, some people prefer just to go and smash it out straight. You know, yeah. it, 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 you, you have to find these processes. <laughs> I didn't realize the time I had an alarm. So um, it does. It made, apparently. Made me jump. Yeah, it made me jump as well. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to change that. That's caught me off guard. Um, so, what? <laughs> Scott, was there anything from you on that particular one before I hit just, you with the last question? Just the point I made earlier, I think, you know, recharge your batteries, find a passion. And, and you know, if that passion is working, it's cooking, and, and that's fine. As Akhtar just said, that's his passion and that's what drives him. But if if you're in a different position within food service or hospitality, you know, find something that allows you to recharge. That, that would be my top tip. Yeah, and it's important. To, as, as Akhtar, I think actually you made a really good point, is that everyone's... Like, Look, we've discussed it enough and I think that everyone is different and um, there are going to be some things that work for you. There are going to be some things that don't, you know, perhaps it is chunking down how you work your hours, how you work, how your brain works, you know, what's what you're putting into your body, but also to understand that sometimes just environments aren't right for you at all. And if they're not right, then make the decision to get out because, you know, quite frankly, there's a load of environments out there at the moment that are right and that are looking for decent people who are willing to work with them um and i think that we as in all professions and i've had it in all jobs we're sometimes guilty of getting a little bit linear focused whereby this is it you know especially with larger corporations you get programmed to tell you that there's nothing else out there that's any good for you it's just this job so i think it's important to understand that the world is beautiful there's tons of opportunities and just don't be afraid and sometimes they won't always work out but be prepared to, to fail and be prepared to learn from it. Um, the final one is, and I'm very, very much risk of um, overrunning. We've got Thomas here with um, with such busy work and personal lives. What techniques do you use to check in with yourselves 
and make adjustments or improvements to um, mental health. I'll let you lead on this one. Hi, thanks, Thomas. Good question. I know I know Tom quite well, so um, there we go. Um, I, I think I think the key thing is it's um, you know w- what we do in, in our business is is have regular time with each individual. You know, we, we call it tack time, and and it, we try and do at least one hour a week with every single person. And I think that's the key point is checking back in, um, and and making sure that you know. The, the hour chat isn't about, you know, how did you get on with that project? It's about how are you? You know, what's going on? How are you? Where are you? You know, all, all of that stuff. And, and I try and spend that time. I need to do it more. Um, but, you know, I think that's the key thing about checking in mentally and then try and tackle that, that type of question. I think physically, again, it's back to that finding half an hour to do whatever it is you need to do. Yoga, walk, run. Um, which then helps your sleep, which then helps everything else that goes along with diet and and the whole thing. So I think the 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 physical and mental absolutely connects together. It's about talking it out, but also finding that half an hour to do something. Nice. I right, time thing from you. Yeah. Well, you know, once again, I I, I think it is about you know how you, how do you manage um, stress levels and stuff like that. I think it is about finding that balance and. Genuinely, I, I think going back to a conversation that we had earlier on about time spent glued to our phones and stuff, I think, you know, almost find a way of locking it away so people can't get hold of you. Um, you don't want to get hold of people. You're not scrolling. And then go for a run, go for a jog, go for a walk, whatever. Like, you know, just do something that means you're, you know, you're not glued to that and you're doing something where there's, there's a nice physical aspect of it. Um, you know, and, and, and you're just giving yourself time just to your brain to wander, I guess, without any stimulus. Mm. I um, took a week away last week, uh, last week, last year, and uh, I was on strict instructions to turn my phone off. Now, I couldn't turn my phone off because we we're in Cornwall emergencies. So I found this option to go into focus mode, which blocked all of my apps. The only two apps that I had were a phone and text messages. And for the first two days, I was climbing the fucking walls. Honestly, I could not sit still. I was constantly looking for something, you know, because obviously you work long hours. You always, you forget how programmed you are just to always be doing something. After about two, two and a half days, I settled into this just state of like complete relaxation whereby I wasn't being pinged by YouTube uh, algorithms or Twitter or emails I managed to sit down and finish a book for the first time in three years. And like, I realized this is, this is incredible. But I think that when I've taught, try and talk to other people about that and I try to explain like, when was the last time you like really took a digital detox, turned your phone off and just cut it off. They're like, Oh, I couldn't do that. What happens if I miss something? And that there, once you can get over that hurdle, that there is a whole completely different. It's really weird. Who would have thought? Shit, little videos with cats and stuff would be that addictive. Like, it's, it's, it's mental. Like, you know, it's nuts. Or, or people doing stupid dances and stuff like that. Like, how, like, like, you know, how did that even happen? We're all guilty of it. We're all sub- subject to it. So I'm not going to sit there and say, you know, somehow say I'm I'm not part part of the problem myself. No, or should I say victim to the problem myself? We all are. I mean, but how did that? When did that creep up and when did that bloody happen? It's just scary. It's natural voyeurism that I think occurs within the human population, but also I think escapism as well. You know, perhaps we are just looking for that thing that allows us to switch off and if it's a cat playing a piano or, you know, world's worst weather videos. Yeah, but it is like general, you know, I'm sure whoever's tuned in, but it's just general shit. Really, it's not going to add any value to your life. It's not going to leave you more enlightened. But we, we, we sit there, and before you know it, you're, you're there, and you're scrolling away. And, you're and I, I genuinely, when, I, when I've done that, I feel disgusted with myself afterwards. I think that's mm. yeah, like, what have I done with my time? And but it's, it, look, it's so easy to do, as conscious as you may be with your problem. It's there. 
And we, we genuinely need to, there needs to be a way where you can switch that, that particular aspect or whatever. You know, social media, we all need to, let's be honest, we all connect with it now, you know, c communicate through it now, like, you know, rather than giving each other a phone call, like, I've got close friends and ping me on Insta or whatever. So, mm -hmm. you know, keep that, that element of it. But how, if the, there should be a way where you can pick and choose whether you want to see or have that aspect of, uh, I don't know, I don't understand the apps well enough to understand whether there is a way to switch that bit off, you know, whether you can make it leaner. I don't know. I, I, I'd say that if there is an ad, there should be something that we or, or we should be a campaign to, to force uh, the, the social media uh, companies into allowing that feature and making that feature easy to switch on and off, because I, th I think that would be very important. Scott, if I was to lock your phone for 24 hours, how would you feel? Uh, uncomfortable. Absolutely. Yeah. Very uncomfortable. Yeah. I, th I agree with you. I think I'd be climbing the walls, Chris. Um, just on that, I, I heard a snippet from another leader uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he went on holiday and he took his phone and he instructed the team they can only message him if he can answer yes or no. So, you know, it's whatever they were going to ask him, the answer could have could only be yes or no. And that was the only way he was going to reply. And I thought that was quite interesting in terms of, you know, blocking unnecessary crap out because we've all been there and we've all had the message of, I know you're on holiday, but can you answer this or can you help that or whatever? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, I think as actor said, we're programmed in to respond to these phones now, you know, and, and, you know, I'd, I'd be really uncomfortable. Um, I think if you blocked, if you blocked it, I can feel a new fundraiser coming on, Scott. <laughs> yeah. People can pledge to see how long you can be without your phone for that, that there. A uh, bit of uncomfortable um, fundraiser, but yeah, builds your resilience. It'll be yeah. fine. It'll be fine. So, um, that one. <laughs> <laughs> guys, um, we have run over, which I'm, I'm, do you know what? I'm not, I'm not. There's some really, some really healthy conversations. We went off piece a little bit, but we've covered a lot of interesting topics. And so um, I wanted to thank you both uh, for your time, for your knowledge, your expertise, and your points of view as well. Um, and is there anything that you had finally to for any of the people that are listening currently? Any final words of wisdom? Look, I think the rea reality is everyone needs to realize this. Like, <laughs> it is your life. And... With, I know there's a lot of like socio-economic factors out there that put people into very difficult situations. I think the political situation in this country, I think it's, it's wrong. I, I do believe we are one of the nations that are probably worst represented by our political leaders, as in for our personal interests and interests of our people. Um, but ultimately, the bits that we have got control over of our lives and we should try and control take control of that as opposed to being um what can i say you know going with the flow as it will you know if if, if it's hurting you and it's not good for you make that change that's um, what i have to difficult because in the end of the day you keep putting up with it at some point it's going to hurt you to stay with it. you're not going to be able to recover from it so do it while you can um, and make that change that's very nice whether that be a role or something that you're doing in your role, whatever, you know, have those conversations. Mm. Yeah, take, take control, which sometimes is easier said than done, but once you can test there's yourself always, with that boundary, there's, right? There's, now. There's, always way, there's, uh, there's always things telling you why it's not going to be, it's not easy. But in the end, there's always a way. You just got to find that way. And, you know, whether you think, oh, I'm going to lose my job, but there's going to be another job out there. So if you, if, you, if you don't enjoy that role, find another one. Find one and then move on. And if you don't enjoy that one, guess what? There's another one out there for you because, yeah, you know, as a, as a, as a country, we've never had so many, like the industry you look into, so many vacancies. Like, you, can, you can reinvent yourself. But I'll be honest with you, there's a time hospitality wasn't giving me enough that I needed to, my business wasn't giving me enough to, fulfill my financial obligations. So for, for several years, I woke up, I finished uh, uh, cooking at one in the morning, and I woke up at six in the morning, and between the hours of eight and five, I sold cars. Uh, I worked for Mercedes Benz, because, and then I finished that off, 
uh, at 5, 5.30, going to the kitchen at 6, and I worked till 1 in the morning. I did that for five years because I, I, I needed to do that, and I made that choice because I needed to do that. Now, what do I know about selling cars? Nothing. I just had a goal, as you've realized, and are they trying to do really well in it because I applied myself <laughs> to it. So then when it got to that stage when, you know, our hospitality came to, you know, the industry was giving me what I needed in order to sustain my my outgoings and sustain my, you know, my obligations. I said thank you very much to the lovely people at Mercedes Benz, and I went back to hospitality. And you know, I said went back. I applied myself fully to it because I was able to sustain myself off it. So you know, you can turn around, turn around to yourself, say, oh, "I've got no choice, and it's difficult." And there, there always is. Mm. You just yeah. have to find it. So my first foray into hospitality was almost in reverse. I was a salesperson and then ended up working in bars. So I'd finish a shift at five, go to work at a bar at six until three in the morning. And I bloody loved it. <laughs> but there was some serious hours going into that, but I bloody loved it. You, you did it at that time because uh, it served a purpose because you needed to do it and you enjoyed mm. it, and which, is, which is the point out of it. And, yeah, I made a lot of lifelong friends in the process of, of doing that, but the, the need survival kicked in and that's why I did it. But I didn't give up my love for hospitality. I just needed to find a way where I could still keep my love for hospitality support the businesses while still being able to fulfill my obligations. So it's, it's, it's making that choice and finding, eking out that opportunity that allows you to do that and do it for as long as it works for you. And when it doesn't, reinvent yourself again. Scott. Akhtar, we're looking for some business development managers. Here at Uno. <laughs> so, you know, if, if you're available and you've got a couple of hours, you know, we can have a chat. Um, <laughs> That, that's the first thing but um no i think i think for me and uh without repeating myself you know you got to find something you love doing and if you love doing it it's not necessarily work you know and it, it comes back to that passion um which resonates with actor said if it's not for you and it's not your passion try and find someone else that's 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 the key part you know um lovely thanks guys right we're dangerously over so i'm going to end this end the stream i hope you guys have enjoyed this and um obviously we'll edit this and load this up as a podcast as well so if you have missed it you can watch it back on our social channels or in the podcast but guys thanks ever so much for uh, for your time today no thank Pleasure. you it's been a lovely thanks. catch up with thanks everyone. For the opportunity thanks everyone Cheers, guys.